Hello and welcome back. So, we will continue uh, on marketing for startups. So, we will try to understand how, what are the steps to know and serve the customers better. So, what is the focused uh, actions? One is market segmentation meaning out of the whole population you try to understand who are the people with this common pain, common aspiration, common needs. So, that you can reach out to this small segment, segment of the people or businesses after knowing where they flock, where how you can communicate with them. Then you target a specific group who have with whom your product and their requirement match very well it's niche marketing. Then uh, you position your product, so that they realize that this is the product that serves them the best or the connect make the connectivity with the product. So, to start with segmentation we need why market segmentation because you, your very mission or your purpose is to serve a certain customer uh, making differentiation better means making better product than competitors. So, obviously, you need to know who the customers are and the customers actually is the segment of people or business that you would want to cater to. So, the first thing even to start a business is to define your segment that this is the segment I am going to target or this segment of the people have this pain. So, I am going to alleviate that pain in a better way than competitors. So, you need to start from the mission means the very mission itself contains your segment because mission says for whom we whom we serve. So, obviously, the segment of the people that you serve. So, mission and segment are inextricably connected associated and as we mentioned at the beginning that marketing management starts from idea stage because idea is connected to a certain community or people who have the pain. So, it starts from there. So, we will move fast we will not uh, dwell so much into introduction. Suffice it to say that that segment is the people for whom you are trying to give a solution and you are trying to understand their unique behavior, their taste, their characteristics, their choices, their aspirations and then structure a product or a service so as to serve them better than uh, even better than their expectation. So, it is a homogeneous small subgroups in a heterogeneous marketplace. This homogeneous group has unique or similar pain, similar aspiration, similar liking, similar needs. Once we define the persona of this group, meaning the common features of this group, we can customize our product. Then we know how they purchase, through what channel we can reach out to them, what media, where uh, means what how to reach out to them through what we should deliver where they make the purchase everything depends on defining your seg or understanding the segment. So, that is why segment is so very important. So, let us define what is market segment is a subset of the market consisting of those people or business among the entire people or business in the market who have similar likes, dislikes, taste and aspiration, similar pain and look for similar solutions, similar they have similar needs and affordability means they can they are similar means it is kind of demographic. So, market segment is identified for the purpose of understanding particular segment of the people. So, this is concerning a particular type of product or service. Why so? Because suppose you are trying to market, we will see that with an example we will show that uh, this is for different product the same group uh, is not the right segment. Like you are trying to market a low cost product, your segment will be something, you are trying to market some kind of a pharmaceutical product, your segment will be uh, will, will may overlap, but then there will be a very different kind of a homogeneous group and this homogeneity is defined based on the product that you market. So, I am trying to drive home this whole segmentation through an example and we discussed about this. Suppose, uh, you are the entrepreneur who is thinking of marketing 10 carat gold jewelry and you are 
your passion or your uh, mission was to serve this segment of the people who aspire to buy gold jewelry, but they, they cannot afford 22 carat gold jewelry. So, now suppose you are targeting a market where there are 500 households. Now, uh, you want to reach out to the right people who will buy, meaning you do not want to waste time talking to people who are not your customer. You want to reach out to people who are your customer. It is always the best to be able to reach out to the people who will buy, but then unless you approach to the right people, you may not be able to achieve that. So, the previous slide is kind of a background. So, now you consider this example 500 household and uh, you need about 1 crore rupees of investment to put up the infrastructure for manufacturing this jewelry 10 carat gold jewelry. Let us move fast first. So, you have two options. One option to understand the market potential and to understand whether people will actually buy 10 carat gold jewelry or not is to risk reach to every household, meaning you start from one end of the village and cross the entire village meeting every household to understand whether they will buy and then come up with a data that will give you, that will help you to statistically look as to if there are so many people 500 fam families, how many of them are kind of willing to buy or kind of desperate to buy etcetera, etcetera. So, you will form your own strategy as to what is the potential customer that you can uh, that you can target in the first first year or so other way of approaching this problem okay what is the problem with this problem problem is that you have to reach to 500 families it may take a month's time to meet 500 families out of this 500 families you will find some family families where there is no female member so maybe they will waste your time meaning you approach to a family, they will, they will be eager to hear what you have to say, but you will unnecessarily waste time because there is no, no female member in the family or maybe it is a poor family from outside you may not even realize, but you spend time, you cannot ask them are you poor or rich or whatever, but whosoever you approach, you spend half an hour time or give a costly brochure, maybe that cost you 500 rupees to print, make etcetera. So, you end up spending a lot of money, resources and time by following this method of approaching to everybody. Whereas, the second approach is to have data, demographic data. What is the income distribution in, in this village? These data are available locally. Most of the panchayat will have the data or some NGOs maintain the data. You can get hold of the data from many sources you will see when you talk about market research. So, you identify or you define the customer's persona, meaning who are your customers. Say the middle income group is your persona, define what is middle income. Say 20,000 rupees a month income is middle income. So, now you have this demographic data about income, about family distribution like how many male, how many female. So, you decide means what is the age distribution of the families and then depending on that you define a, a small sub group who are the likely buyer of your product. So, maybe say 30, 40 or 50 families instead of 500 families now you approach to only 50 families and you can complete this exercise in 5 days or say 10 days and then, but then every effort is worthwhile because your audience now are the right people who are potential buyer. So, you adopt second method, how to, how to approach this? So, this is the demographic distribution, you know lower income families are 300, middle income 80, high income families are 40, male only families are 50. So, this is how the 500 families are distributed. Now, you would like to reach out only to middle income families, that means you want to reach to only 80 families, which is 16 percent of the village. So, your job is cut down to only 16 percent from 100 percent the entire entire village. So, that is how you decide market segment meaning this 16 percent or 80 families constitute your segment in the village not in the country as a whole because you want to grow and 
reach out to the entire middle income group in the country, but then for in the village this is your segment. But when somebody asks you what is your market segment, you should not say this 80 families is my market segment. That is your, your, uh, your serviceable available market, meaning this, this is the families you can reach out to at the beginning. But moving forward when your business model is kind of proven, then you are going to reach out to larger audience. Now, you send brochure to only these 80 families. So, the cost comes down. You create awareness through the brochure. You send letters to families intimating that a representative will come to demonstrate. You complete meeting all the, all the families in a week or so. And you make connectivity, they start, they start inquiring, they start you know responding through telephone or maybe they you now offer some method of connecting with them, some channel to you know send the product so that they buy and make payment. So, in the process we learn uh, the importance of market segmentation. So, here is the definition, a crisp definition of market segment, the segmentation the process of creating a homogeneous subgroup of people based on criteria suitable for marketing a particular product or service out of a heterogeneous population is segmentation. So, here uh, other point about segmentation is that you define one segmentation that is for a particular product. But that does not mean this is a sacrosanct segment for all the product, similar kind of products, not necessarily. Like suppose you want to sell low cost detergent. Now, the poor families will be your market segment, poor families and some part of the middle income families. So, there the definition of segment will be absolutely different. So, segment depends on product, on service. So, there is no uniformity meaning that for every product out of the same population in the village you will you will define different different segments so any population can be uh, can be segmented umpteen number of times where there will be many overlapping means many people will overlap into one segment in another segment so what do you, what did you achieve by segmenting the cost of sending letters reduced cost of communicating because you know where they meet or something whether they are internet savvy or not, etcetera. It has now become easier to manage them, particularly to serve them better. You can get feedback from them easily because it is a small group of people and they, their persona, their requirement, their, their story resonates with your offering. You can, you can now uh, come up with a wonderful story uh, or brand storytelling and then uh, you can uh, you know connect, them, connect with them emotionally and then create a brand among this small segment of the population. So, that explains why we segment, we try to reduce cost, we try to understand the pain in a better way by you know having a focused group meaning who have similar kind of pain aspiration and then we understand that pain and then we come up with a product or we refine, uh, redefine our solution to meet their pain in a better way. We can understand what is the market size, what how much we can target. So, we can plan our manufacturing strategies or marketing budgets, we can do everything provided we understand the segment. We assess the entry barrier and competitive landscape, we explore developing such a solution at competitive rate etcetera etcetera. We will move forward. We can save lot of money, lot of time, lot of uh, resources and then we can create higher awareness, we can, we can think about the logistics and the delivery system. So, how to means uh, segment is one thing. Now, suppose you are pitching before any kind of an audience, maybe investor, maybe, maybe for incubation or something. Now, the main question they are going to ask you, what is your target? Uh, sales in the next year or how much and how do you define that. So, first thing is defining a segment, but then you are not going to cater to the entire segment in the first year or any time moving forward, because there will be competing players who will be 
uh, not to be taking a significant market share from from the market so you will be catering to a small portion of the segment what a small portion how do you define that so there are three three construct actually three separate constructs to define how much you can actually achieve a capture in the next year or how much you intend to capture there is a definition for this the entire uh, segment is called total available market suppose in india or we give the example in the next slide total available market meaning whatever middle income population are there in india is the available market you can reach out to any of them theoretically but geographically perhaps you cannot reach out but then theoretically all of them are your customer so that is called total available market if you translate that into rupee it is a total demand of the product in the entire market called tam total available market then comes serviceable available market or sam that is the demand of the product among the segment that you are targeting meaning in the village whatever is the population middle income population that you want to cater to but then in the first year you won't be able to cater to all of that so maybe you will be catering to only 10% of that that is what is serviceable obtainable market meaning you can obtain that capture that market called some so here is the how you go about it suppose the total market middle income household a uh, jewelry market in india suppose it is 1 lakh crore suppose in this particular village with 500 families perhaps their annual budget will be something like 10 crore now how much of that you are going to capture in the first year that is about 10% of this 10 crore so it is 1 crore so in your business plan you are going to project this as your next year sales and this is highly logical in reality you may actually achieve much more than that much less than that but then this is how systematically and scientifically you can project the basis of segmentation are many actually but in and uh, majorly they are geographic demographic behavioral psychographic this is a core marketing subject so we'll not uh, dwell too much in uh, on this so we'll move forward you can read them pausing the slide because we have so many things to discuss now we said there are three ways to reach to the cu customer one is segmenting then target marketing so while selling the 10 carat jewelry you will realize that even in middle income families the young girls have a different kind of a taste compared to matured women so you have to really come up with little bit of a differentiation to meet particular suppose you want to target the young generation of this segment so you try to target them and you try to for, for means uh, develop jewelry matching their particular test so you target a niche market in the whole segment so you have to really find the product that suits their mood their aspiration that will help you to connect well with this particular group who has fascination about certain fashion or or design so strategy to meet this differentiated need and aspiration of different groups of customers by customizing your solution to fit their unique requirement is target marketing so target market is a niche marketing it is within the segment you try to meet the particular need of a, a smaller group of people comes positioning so the 10 carat gold jewelry that we have discussed is affordable by your target people now you have to tell a story so that they connect with your product so you position your product into their mental space so that in their mental image they think that this is our product this is a product that we should buy we are aspiring and this meets our our needs our aspiration that is how you position your product in the mental space of your customer you create a positive and attractive image of your product and you send a message to the people that this means it's again persona their persona and your position positioning is with their persona you tell people through either either uh, content marketing like storytelling 
you tell them that this is the product they should look for like this huggies. You maintain the quality you assure and keep the promise you make to make them happy. In the process you get loyal customers, you build a bond with your products. This process of creating favorable image of a product or service in the minds of targeted customer is known as positioning. Your customer prefer your product over those of the competitors and spread a positive message. They become evangelist meaning they acquire they help you to acquire more customer. So, what is the process of positioning? I think we have already discussed. So, we will try to move forward you can read them. So, next in the in the marketing what expert marketers do to connect to formulate their strategy for marketing is the marketing mix. Marketing mix refers to the set of construct and actions or tactics that a company use or they try to maneuver to promote their brands and product in the marketplace. And the mix, the variables are the product, the price, the place and promotion. It is widely refers to as 4 P's of marketing. So, it starts with product. Product is what we call product market fit means whatever the market is demanding you try to come up with exactly the same product or maybe a better product to give the customer positive surprise. Then you price it in a manner so that it becomes competitive with respect to the competing products in the marketplace. Place is the logistic, the, the where your customer will buy, the channel through which you reach out to the customer, where they buy and how you deliver is everything about place. And then promotion. So, you come up with a with a kind of a scheme uh, like some kind of a discount or some kind of offer that the customer cannot refuse is the promotion. So, there are various ways of reaching out and uh, attract customer to make purchase decisions. Now, there is another philosophy of this marketing mix, the product that solves customer that does the job of the customer. In our uh, value proposition canvas, we have shown that customer wants to get some jobs done by the company. So, the product actually does the job whatever customer wants. Perhaps it supersedes the expectation to solve customer pains. It wants to give some gain also that is what is the product. So, customer solution or pain reliever is the product. Price is the is again it is a cost to the customer. It may be the revenue to the company, but it is a cost to the customer. So, it is a negative thing from customer's point of view. So, you try to alleviate that negative feeling by trying to price it in a manner that they feel wow time kind of, but then you cannot do that at a cost of losing the profit. Place is communication and delivery as I said, promotion is convenience. So, 4 P's are connected to 4 C's, 4 P's are from the point of view of the company, 4 C's are from the point of view of the customers. There is another very important concept in marketing, this is called marketing funnel, you will read that everywhere. It is a process through which a public which is kind of a normally referred to a suspect come to a, one person comes to know about your product and then gradually, gradually they try to know more about it and then becomes kind of a prospect and then eventually they make purchase decision and become a customer. Not only that, they give they become a reference point, they, they kind of spread good words, kind words to other people and then they bring more customers, which is referred to as marketing funnel. So, you create awareness to people who are unconnected with your product. They are, you just suspect that okay, these people can be my customer. So, they are yet to be your customer. Who are they? They are the people in the market segment. Now, the funnel 
uh, shrinks as you, as you move forward because more and more people are your suspect then gradually some people goes away S smaller and smaller people re remain as your lead then they become prospective customer then at every stage you guide your suspect along the path and eventually to make purchase. So, execution of this entire philosophy entire method is very very complex and it requires complete reinvention means every time you try to see a small group of people they, they have a kind of a unique idiosyncrasy and then you try to match that to come up with new kind of a strategy to, to, to force them into the channel and to buy. Your capability to do that will determine your marketing uh, success. So, you need to understand the unique attitude, intent or behavior at a, a, for every group of a small group of people and then force them into the tunnel. So, initially you create awareness, then uh, at you create awareness to suspect, then some interest is generated, some people start considering to buy, maybe they log in, but then they do not buy, then the intent meaning they kind of show some kind of they frequently visit and examine, they see the, the kind of evaluation people have given the three star four star kind and then they start evaluating people's reaction to uh, to the product and then eventually they buy it's very important philosophy uh, important concept in marketing here are some reference and they are uh, really nice references particularly some blogs like say uh, about uh, storytelling brand storytelling is a very powerful tool and and anybody everybody any uh, startup must come up with a brand with a nice story that will resonate with customers uh, persona their requirement their 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 whole entire story so that so that uh, they become passionate emotionally attached to the company then uh, I have the airbnb uh, reference also perhaps no i don't see them you can uh, kind of google search and find that's all. Thank you very much.